In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Good morning. It's lovely to welcome you this morning as we continue getting back in church, getting used to our normal routine. But it shall come 
The Lord be with you.
may be given to me to speak in the name of the living word, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This may not surprise you, but I'm not much of a businessman. My understanding of the world of finance is limited to my GCSE business studies, which obviously I took almost 20 years ago, and watching Alan Sugar and The Apprentice with a little bit of Dragon's Den thrown in. However, I can tell you that the returns and yield with this farmer in this parable aren't very good. In fact, they're pretty poor. Any farmer worth their salt, given these kind of returns, the wastage of three quarters of the seeds, would surely change the way they sow that seed, develop a much more productive way of sowing seeds and farming. Would get more of his crop, would get more return. And the farmer understand, would understand that even the farmers who were listening to Jesus on that beach as he was out in that boat would have understood something of the obscurity, the ridiculousness of this story. But of course, when we take that kind of way of understanding, we look at it through the eyes of the world, look at it through the economy of profit and loss, human economy. Here we are dealing with something else, the economy of the kingdom of God. And something else comes out, that when this farmer sows the seed, He's not thinking necessarily about the successes of one seed, but offering the chance for each seed to grow and develop. And of course, we know we're not talking really about farmers and fields. We are talking about the kingdom of God. We are talking about the generosity of God. We are talking about the love of God. And this is what Jesus, then in the first head of his parable, was trying to get across, among other things. How God keeps on giving, keeps on planting, keeps on sowing that seed wherever he goes. Giving each seed, each part of the soil, to be able to grow and develop. No matter who we are or where we are, the generosity of God shines through, continuing to love us, continuing to give us a chance to grow and be the people who he calls us to be. So today we give thanks that God works not on the model of a human economy, but on his economy, his life, and he keeps on going. You see, for some of for him, he may know or think that we are a lost cause, that things have gone wrong in the past, but that doesn't stop his generosity, his incredible love to keep on giving. To keep on giving each of us, no matter what has happened in the past, the chance to keep on growing, to know his word, to come to him. No one is a lost cause. No one is lost. He keeps on sowing until he yields what we, until he helps us yield what we are called to yield. Called to be. He gives us generously, continually generously, without counting the cost, but just giving us chance after chance to grow, to be the people who he calls us to be. 
And the quest of this is at the heart for me this week, at the understanding of this parable about the generosity of God, a God who is generous with his love, who is generous with his grace, who is generous with his being, continually to give to us, to be with us. And the question for us, perhaps, this morning, with this model of generosity before us, is to ask ourselves, how do we respond to such generosity? How do we respond to such love? How can we live our lives full of that generosity, of continuing to love others, to give of ourselves to others, without worrying necessarily about what comes next? Not to continually to sow where we know we will be rewarded, but to continue to sow in the dark and hard places of our world, where we cannot count the success, to continue to give us of ourselves in our daily life, not being, gen being generous with those who we meet, not with just those who we all know who will respond, talking to people when they know that we will not get anything back. That is the generosity of God and the generosity we are called to live in our lives. It is a reminder for us, this parable, of how we should live those lives according not to the human economy, but the economy of God's kingdom, to give with little chance of reward, where everything looks impossible, because this is the kingdom of God. One great example that came to mind as I was preparing this morning was from the musical Les Miserables, which obviously, sadly, we won't be able to hear unless it's on our tape recorders for some time. But still, the story rings true as an example, again, a metaphor of the generosity that we are called to live in our lives. Our main character, those who haven't seen the musical, is Jean Valjean, who had been released after 19 years in a prison cell. He was unable to get work, destitute, at the end of his week, nowhere to sleep that night. And he was taken in for a night by a local bishop. And Valjean, taken in, given that care and love, responded to that bishop by stealing all his silver. However, he was caught by the police and taken back to the bishop's palace where he was asked to lay the silver out for him and would have been taken away and put back in prison. But the bishop responds with incredible generosity, saying, no, 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 he didn't steal it from me. I gave him all my silver to have. An act of incredible generosity, which surely, if he had had a human mindset, had no chance of anything from it. Surely this Von Jean, Von, a convict, would just continuing to go about his life stealing. What effect would that generosity have? Of course, if, like me, you've seen the musical, it was that act of generosity that completely changed Jean Valjean's life, completely changed the way in which he lived. That generosity of that character of a bishop who gave without any chance really or any thought of success, but was willing just to give of himself, 
give of his goods to that destitute ex-convict, or that's all that he knew. But it was through that act of generosity, against all odds and all understanding, that changed the life of any number of people. It changed the life of Jean Valjean because he went on to change his life and become an upstanding member of the community, then changed the lives of the people who Valjean employed and of the other characters in the story. That one act of generosity, if when you think about it, had at the beginning little chance of reward change the world in that film and that's the generosity we are called to live in our lives because when we are generous with each other as god is generous to us then incredible things can happen things which we don't expect that go against all human logic all of our understanding in the act of that generosity, lives change, the world changes, and the kingdom of God grows. And that is how we are called to live our lives, with that generosity of spirit, that generosity of being, being willing to give of ourselves without thinking what the reward will be, without it being what we will gain from it. We are called just to be generous with each other. And of course, this can easily be just be about money. And I think that would be too easy. It's about being generous of ourselves, not just about what we do with the resources that we have. It's about being generous of who we are, about being willing to share with each other, being willing to give our time, being willing to smile and to chat to others. In fact, we have seen an increase in the generosity of spirit during this pandemic time. People more willing to stop and to talk, more willing to chat, more willing to give of themselves, not knowing who they were chatting to just a smile shared across the street and that is the call for all of us to live as generously as we can to be willing to give of ourselves to people who we've never met to give of ourselves to share and be with each, with each other and that is how we build community and wouldn't it be great that one of the results of this post-pandemic world in which we live, that the tragedy and the difficulties that we, as all humanity and the whole world, have experienced, has caused us to reflect on our lives, reflect on who we are, and reflect on how we are with each other. And that perhaps we do continue to live in a generosity of spirit that the parable of the sower reminds us of this morning. That we can all be generous with each other, be generous of our time, be generous of our resources, and just be generous of ourselves. And if we were all able to do that a little more, to try a little harder, we would build community, build a community that stands as a perfect epitaph of this pandemic. And as we build that community of generous people giving of their love and their time to each other, as we build that community, so we build the kingdom of God. Amen.
band to share, to say we really get it. We believe in one world, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally God of the Father, God of God, light of the light, true God of the God, begotten of one of one of one of the Father, who the all things in heaven, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was the Amen. For our sake, he was crucified and conscious by us. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one of the Catholic and Apostolic Church. We acknowledge our baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. For the power of spirit, and in the of Christ, let us pray to the Father.
for a member country is where the pandemic is still rife. USA and the problems with violence and gun crime. Pray for wisdom for our government as it resolves the economic needs for survival with acquiescence with authoritarian and unjust regimes. Lord, in your mercy. And we stand as we share the peace together. We are the Holy Christ, in one spirit we all by the life of one God. Let us then ensue the nation's peace and build our heart of life. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. We share silently in our hearts the silent peace with those around. He took an end 
And we are continuing to offer our evening Eucharist uh, at 6 on a Sunday evening. So hopefully there is enough space for everyone to come uh, uh, if they wish. And of course, if more people come and we want space, we will just go on another one. So, uh, that's, uh, so we can pray for that God when we arrive at That's excellent. I think everything else is fairly straightforward in there. But today is a moment. Uh, Jessica, if you'd like to come and stand out here. Uh, Jessica. Obviously, you don't have to be too much for me to ask on. Uh, this is Jessica's last Sunday with us for a while. Uh, we're in lockdown, we announced that Jessica's going off to serve her curacy in the Upland with uh, Olivia over there, which is only next door, really, so not too far. And we do a fair bit of things, so we will see it. But uh, she's leaving her role as a woman and transferring into the uh, a licensed lay worker, whatever that means, for a few months before the ordination in September, when she'll get to wear the collar and all the stuff as well. So you go by prayers and thanks to all of you people in this church over all those years. And we hope to see you again soon. I'm sure it's not goodbye. Uh, it's uh, we'll see you again soon. We have a little gift just to say, Mark, this uh, uh, remarkable uh, this time. Which I managed to be without Barbara here to uh, get joining me like that. So that's quite a simple thing. Thank you. <laughs> Say a prayer over Jessica. She goes with our prayers, our blessings, and our love uh, to all the folk who are ending up with. And we know that you're there at the desk. We've been a very generous church giving away our resources. Uh, to our no parents, so go with our friends. Almighty God, thank you for being the Holy Spirit in your church to lead us in the water. Bless the Spirit's grace and presence. Jessica, as she goes to serve her purity in heaven, keep her steadfast in faith, united in love, that she may manifest your glory. And prepare the way of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Another round of applause. This is one of the good things uh, about COVID. That if we had not been in COVID, we'd probably have sat and thought you're enjoying the fair or something like that. So you don't have to put up with me eating that. So that's a a plus. <laughs> Just to say, we, we're not able, if you're wondering where our collection was, we're not able to take collections on the way in. There is a plate on the way out, which is for our church uh, collections, because one of the COVID regulations you can't pass that around. Right? But there is a way of dropping it as you need out here. Right. Yeah? Okay, grocery pack on at 5 o'clock from Monday, so that's great. All those here and online, and yes. Oh, and if you could leave your uh, service sheet uh, on your seat as you leave, it helps us in cleaning, so we don't have to clean everything, just clean where people have been sat in preparation for our 11.30, that would be great. Uh, and obviously come out this way, etc. So our final prayer of blessing. The Lord be with you. Yes. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge of God and of His Son Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Thank you. 